Welcome to the DPM video cast, where Kelly and I give our five cents on some of the discussions that have been going on in our Slack team. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, well, join our Slack team by going to the digitalprojectmanager.com and you'll be able to join two and a half thousand other people who are talking about everything related to Digital Project Manager. We've got channels there uh, from everything from PMP uh, to Agile to tools and everything in between. And this video cast is sponsored by Clarison. They're the leader in enterprise project and portfolio management software. Uh, but today we want to talk about a bit of a tricky question. And that is really, someone contacted us and said, hey, what do you do um, when your team is already overworked and they're feeling the pressure, everyone's got their headphones in and they're kind of uh, grinding day in, day out. And then you... They're already working hard. They're already probably working some overtime. And then it comes to launch time and you have to get them. You have a request that comes in from the client where they're asking for something even more that's out of scope. Uh, but you just kind of feel like you need to get it done. And then you feel like you've got no currency with the team because you've been asking them all the way along to just do what they can to get it done. And it feels like you're constantly kind of on a back foot with your team, trying to make these requests to them, trying to kind of ask them to stay late and get the project done. And then something big and new comes in that wasn't planned for. What do you do? How do you manage your team and motivate your team in that situation? What do you do when you kind of feel like you've got nothing to offer them? This is a tricky question, uh, but I think it's something that comes up probably quite a lot because as DPMs, we're not people's line managers. We're often not the one who can just say, do you know what, designer, you've been working really hard. Take Friday off. And we often can't really do that. And we often can't say, do you know what, here's a gift card to take yourself out for dinner. Um, we don't really have the authority to do that often. So what can we do? I don't know. So let's ask Kelly. <laughs> Yeah, no, this is a fantastic question and such a common issue or challenge. Um, I think that, so I think that there's a, a few parts to this. And first, I think it comes down to resource management and resource planning. And I think that if at all possible, you can argue the argument and, you know, and it takes a while sometimes to get the trust of whether it's a traffic coordinator, you know, type role or getting, you know, executive or C-level roles to buy into it, but to have resources working or teammates working at a 35 hour week. So you have four hours of slush time, or I should say five hours of slush time. And uh, what you do with that is that you just say that five hours is unplanned so that you have a little bit extra time. And if they nothing comes up that week, they can just continue with whatever is assigned to them. And if not, they, there's a, some wiggle room. Now, that is so like ideal world, rarely able to happen. So we have everybody at full time and overtime. What do you do? I think the mistake that PMs often make is they go straight to the resource and it's what we naturally want to do because they're who we need to do the work. So we go straight to them and say, Hey, your bud's out. Can you do this quick for me? Like, I promise I won't always do this. And you can say, and it becomes white noise because we do it so often. Um, and I think what's best is actually talk to whatever other PM might be overseeing what their workload is. Because if you're the only PM, I think you can manage the other projects that may or may not be affected by you prioritizing this other thing. That's the case. It's almost you're lucky because then you can say, I'm going to deprioritize my other client because you get to make that choice. If you want to prioritize this one, what's going to happen with this one and explain that to your teammate who you're asking more of saying, I know I'm making you switch gears here or asking you to switch gears here, but I'm going to deprioritize this other work. So at least you're not working more hours, I hope. Um, but if you are working with another PM who it affects their workload, talk to them first and see what's possible. And, uh, you know, too often in these atmospheres or these environments, it feels like dog eat dog with uh, PMs and it's kind of my resources and who can get the most, the fastest. And it can really be a, uh, it can be a balance of, okay, like if I'm able to get five hours of this, is that okay? And we can, you know, you give and you take and you figure out what works and you'll be pleasantly surprised. It's not always immediate, but over time, what that does to the PM team dynamic and with the credibility and trust you build with your resources who are on the delivery team and doing that production work. Um, and so after you talk with that PM and you get it figured out, then go to the resource and 
inform them on why. Don't just say, this is the task, do it, thanks, hurry up. Um, but it's saying, this is why, this is the context, is that gonna work? Or what compromise can we figure out? Um, also buy pizza, just buy some pizza. You can never go wrong with pizza. Yeah, definitely. I think one other comment that I wanna make is that in this question that was asked, they talked about the fact that this wasn't part of the original scope. And I think when people know that something wasn't part of the original scope, and then they're asked to make a change, it can kind of feel like, hey, you know, it's a slight against them because they're like, hey, I did what I was supposed to do and now the client's changed their mind and now I have to pick up the slack. So I think the first thing I would say is make sure you are managing scope. And if the client's asking for something out of scope at the last minute, then they should pay for it and you need to issue a change request. And as part of that change request, it's resetting expectations around when the project can be delivered. Like just because a client requests something at the last minute and it's, they think it's important, like we need to give the client the option. Hey, either we go ahead with what you signed off on and what we've created for you, uh, what was agreed, or we delay the project, you pay more and we get this additional thing done. So don't treat uh, scope as a, as a flexible thing. Um, treat it as, as what it is, it's, it's what they paid for. Unless obviously you've got an engagement that looks different to that and you're working on time and materials. But I think it's really good for clients to understand as quickly as possible, there's a consequence uh, to asking for more work and that is that things take longer and cost, cost more money. Um, but I also totally buy into what Kelly's talking about with, hey, make sure your resourcing is, a, is effective as possible. If you can resource only 35 hours a week, um, build some slack into the schedule like that, that's great. And I think that point about pizza is great as well. Like if you've got people working late, make sure that you're in the trenches with them. Don't just go home and say, you know, uh, please stay late tonight because uh, we need to get this done. You need to stay with them. They need to feel like that they're, you know, part of a team and that you're in this together with them. So yeah, buy some donuts, buy some pizza, turn it into a work party as best you can um, and be there with them to get it done. They've got to feel like you're part of this and not just someone who keeps on telling them to stay late. Um, otherwise, they're not going to be very happy. But I hope that's helpful. That's all we've got time for today. If you'd like to join this discussion and this debate about what do you do when you have to keep on asking people to stay late um, and how you deal with that, we'd love to know what you think. Comment below, uh, send us a DM and let us know your thoughts. And obviously join our Slack team too where we've got all kinds of conversations like this going on. But until next time, thanks for watching. <laughs>